Okay, hi everybody. Um, thanks, uh, Gottfried and Robert and Juan and Carlos for uh, for inviting me to this. I'm I'm a faculty at uh, New York University in New York City, uh, professor of biology and environmental studies. Uh, but I also uh, think of myself as a kind of a systems person, maybe patternologist. Hopefully, by the end of this, you won't think of me too much as a uh, kind of a wild analogy ologist or something, but uh, we'll, we'll see. We'll see where it goes. Um, been really enjoying meeting a number of you and uh, learning, getting some new insights into into patterns of music that I hope to apply uh, to my work and to to uh, some students and and uh, some of this talk you could think of as, as you know if I could change my career kinds of things I would like to investigate. Um, some of this uh, was based upon my book, Meta Patterns Across Space, Time, and Mind, Columbia University Press, in which I looked at, uh, and still look at, uh, a number of basic patterns. Now, this is not mathematical modeling. This is something more akin to uh, architectural, uh, looking, looking at functional architectures of systems. I, mean, I actually did my undergraduate degree in architecture, and I started looking at the architecture of nature, and I realized you could look at the nouns and verbs of language as kind of a binary system. So, so you see in there, there's a double, double circles, it's binary systems, borders, centers of systems, layers of systems, and then patterns of time. So I'm gonna to try to concentrate on the patterns of time today applied to some of what I've been hearing in this conference about, uh, about music. So I'm gonna do, um, the talk is music in a, I guess a cosmic context, uh, then something I'm calling an alpha kit and braid dynamics, I'll have to define those terms uh, later, and then other meta patterns as opportunities for inquiry, arrows, breaks, cycles, and binary in particular. Now the music in the cosmic context, what I, what I needed to do to, uh, to take you there is this is gonna be the role of music coming in from the Big Bang. Not at the Big Bang, but you know how, how the Big Bang got to music. And I've been, uh, this is a, a book I'm writing called uh, Quarks to Culture. Uh, the basic idea is that if you if you think of your body and think of some of the systems inside the body, if we go down to the cell, there's smaller, uh, smaller systems within the body, and then go down into cells and there's molecules and atoms w within the cell and down into subatomic particles. And I, I realized at one point, well, that's, you get a nesting of systems, you get an, a, a layering of systems, and as you're going downward, you tend to be going back in time not in terms of the specific cell in my body now, but in terms of the cell as an entity when it came into being. And so you're, you're, in a way you're going back in time into more and more ancient types of entities when they came into being. So then we can say after the Big Bang when you get uh, the quarks and other, other uh, particles of this, what the physicists call the standard model, Somehow that got to the complexities of culture. Now many people tell the cosmic story of, of, of how they got the complexity of the culture, and if you're a paleontologist, you're gonna for sure bring, bring in the KT impact that wiped out the dinosaurs and allowed the mammals that existed that were small to expand in evolutionary time. So different, different scholars are gonna tell different stories of the narrative, the, the cosmic narrative, but I was, I was, I'm asking whether there's a, an, a, a a relatively objective way of doing this, and that is by something I'm calling uh, combogenesis. Now, combogenesis is going to be the forming of larger systems from pre-existing smaller systems. So, the, and, and this is, molecule, molecules existed uh, as entities before cells existed. Cells had to exist before multicellular organisms could exist. And this is a way of looking at physics, biology, and uh, culture. I'm not going to be able to go into uh, all the, all the um, details of this, but the basic idea is this, that on the left you have some kind of, some kind of things that have relations that are the, uh, the, the dotted lines that go out, and then through combogenesis, now I coined this term because there's nothing in, in, in particularly in physics or biology or culture that uh, can fit, uh, fit the same pattern. The same pattern is occurring, I'm gonna say, that you can go from quarks to culture. So I coined this term. Uh, it's not the perfect term, but it's what you're going to hear uh, tonight. 
Uh, now, on the, on the right-hand side, you get a, a new larger thing that has new relations, and the new relations are very important because that's the only way you get from quarks to culture. You, you, you had, it's not just of gravity making bigger plant, making bigger planets out of planetesimals in which it's still gravity as you get bigger. This is something new that's coming in all the time. So you can think of it as a series of steps uh, at, from, the, from the lower left uh, to the upper right as, this is, as it's getting larger and larger. But really it's not steps, it's, it's happening concentrically as the cutting edge, the avant-garde system at any one time is, is moving outward. So I, I wanted to ask, can one actually count the number of these fundamental steps from the simplest things uh, currently known? There may be super strings beyond those, but the things of the standard model, can one count the steps? And I've come up with this number, uh, and it happens to be uh, 12. <laughs> so we are products of the 12-step program of the universe. Um, and so you get quarks in the gluons, uh, things of the standard model, nucleons, which are protons and neutrons, atomic nuclei, atoms, molecules, prokaryotic cells, eukaryotic cells. I'm going to go over a little bit of this. Complex multicellular organisms, animal societies, cultural webs of we, which is where music first comes in at step 10. I see, I see, I want to say a few words about culture. These, these cultural webs of we, I see them as groups of animal groups. Culture is a way of, of knowing that the group over the hill from you still has uh, you know, a, a relative that you haven't seen for years and you can talk about those people. So I see culture in a way is a, a web of we. Agrovillage is when plants and animals become part, the energy components of the human networks and then geopolitical states, which is the discovery of merger and acquisition where they, they discovered how to do expandable, infinitely expandable hierarchies of control so you can actually take over another political unit and combine it. Now, there's some bigger, I want to point out a couple things in here. Atoms and molecules uh, from levels four and five, prokaryotic cells level six, and uh, cultural webs of we level 10. I'm going to get you into something I'm calling the alpha kit. I have to coin this term. It's maybe not a perfect term. Um, I, even I originally was calling it the alphabetic holarchy. But the alpha kit, uh, I think of it as having two, comp two uh, central sets, a set of elements, a set of a uh, small number of elements, and then those can combine into a near infinity set. Now, it sounds like combogenesis, but I'm only using combogenesis for these major steps of the universe. This is something that can exist in many different scales. Uh, and in fact, I'll, I'll, I'm gonna show you uh, uh, some things about it. So it definitely exists from atoms to molecules because the kinds of chemical elements are 90 something, uh, kind of naturally occurring elements. So it's a small number of elements in a set. We literally call them elements. And then there's the near infinity set, molecules. How many molecules are there? Uh, there, looks like there are several thousand uh, types of minerals on Earth before life. But once you have or cells, the, the, what they call the protein universe is uh, of molecules. The number of proteins, as the biologists talk about, is possibly trillions. The way these, these basic kinds of atoms can combine. So you see why it's a small number of elements combining into a near infinity set. It's not just any kind of combination. It's a very specific kind of architecture. Now if you look at, so that's, that's the, those are two levels, but if we get into level six of the prokaryotic cell, for sure amino acids w existed. They had to exist because all cells have them. They have the same set of 20 and they form a protein universe of trillions of proteins. Now when we get into the human level, we have, uh, of course, letters of the English alphabet didn't exist at the origin of, of, of um, language, but uh, phonemes seem to exist all over the world. English has about 40. And, and what you can do is combine these phonemes into great complexity. You can almost name anything, uh, that, anything you, you, that you see, anything you conceive of. It's a way of bringing, uh, making cultural evolution uh, really happen. And what's, I think one thing very interesting is the following, is that um, I put down in the elements set down below, the amino acids are within the entities of level six, the prokaryotic cell, as well as the proteins. So this alpha kit is not just two levels, now it's, it's in the thing that came into being at level six, the prokaryotic cell, and the phonemes going to words is within the thing of the webs of we that came in at level 10. 
Now, many people have remarked that the genetic code has similarities to language in the way it's kind of hierarchically structured in this nested creation of complexity. But I think it's a much, 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 much bigger deal than is normally made. I mean, I think it's really something fundamental to what happened in these steps of, of, uh, of the universe uh, because at, because, um, let's see, what do I have here? Oh, that's a, because we, we, we can, s the prokaryotic cell with an alpha kid inside it gave rise to biological evolution. That was not an ordinary step. That really changed the dynamics of, of, of that was happening with those systems. And on level, what I'm calling level 10, the cultural webs of we, in which there's an alpha kit inside the, the entities of that level, really changed the dynamics from biological evolution to a cultural evolutionary process. So I think that there's something that happened at level six and 10 as birth levels of biological and cultural evolution that is very tied up with these alpha kits that got invented at least twice, even though there was a precursor in the atom to molecule, but one cannot argue any kind of evolutionary um, uh, reason there. But it is interesting that, that on all three levels, uh, all three, what I'm now calling dynamical realms, there's this alpha kit. So um, now what happens in evolution? When I talk about evolution, I really mean something very specific. I don't just mean the way astronomers would talk about the evolution of a galaxy, meaning change. I, I want to talk about the way, uh, let's say, some Daniel Dennett may talk about an algorithm, or Richard Lewontin talks about a logical skeleton. Uh, it's really, there's numbers of ways of breaking this down, of parsing it, but typically it's in three components. A propagation term, there's something in which systems propagate themselves or get propagated, like we, we will manufacture automobiles and if it sells well, you manufacture more automobiles of the same kind. There's ways of varying the system, so in biology, there's mutational, there's g genetic uh, variation. In, in culture, there's all kinds of things. You can, uh, uh, you can invent, you can, um, uh, engineers will vary something, a writer is writing a book or ri writing a new poem. And then there's selection, biological, natural selection, and sexual selection. Darwin was aware of this, and in culture, selection is very complicated. Uh, but I, I call these because it's three processes, three sub-processes. I'm just going to call it braid dynamics for the simplification here. Now, these braid dynamics, are, I think, are very closely tied to within L6, the biological braid dynamics, because that gives, first of all, it gives the cells complexity, and it gives ways of creating variation because of this complexity. And then with level 10, the phonemes to words, uh, give cultural complexity, and so it's a ways of propagating systems, varying systems, and selecting systems. Now, I can't, I'm not going to go into all this, but I do want to make one remark about culture, that, um, that braid dyna there's braid dynamics in, I think culture has what I'm calling a two-tier braid dynamics. Braid dynamics in our minds, in which we go through um, uh, thinking of thoughts, thinking of ideas, selecting them, varying them, so we, ha we, can have, we can have it in our heads. And then they also happen uh, among people. They can happen in very, very complicated ways. I, I would like to see a project uh, in which one tries to uh, um, lay out the different kinds of selection projects in culture. I think this is, people work in cultural evolution, but I talked to Masudi, um, uh, Alex Masudi at a conference about a year ago, and he didn't think it had really been uh, worked out in terms of the braid dynamics in one's head and the braid dynamics socially, because in socially you can get market selection, collective agreements and disagreements, decision by power, where a single person can decide for millions uh, what something is going to be. And also in culture, we want to look at common ancestry, borrowing, and convergence. Now, where does music come in on this? Uh, definitely comes in at level 10, uh, what I'm calling the cultural webs of we. That uh, th th this is a, a, a flute discovered about this about 35,000 years old, uh, published in Nature in 2009, made out of the bone of, of a vulture. Uh, we so we know there was music uh, then about the same time that we can say we don't know. I'm not going to try to. I'm not trying to say when language came versus when music came, but definitely by the time you have the Upper Paleolithic and complex culture that is in large scale networks, uh, music was there. Now music, I think, is really. Uh, <laughs> 
don't have to tell you, music is really fascinating. Uh, that that uh, it, it has these gray dynamics. On the bottom, you have the DNA bases, kind of the genetic code. Numbers also, I mean, it's not gray dynamics. You have the alpha kit structure in which numbers, uh, few numbers can make many different um, uh, systems. A few number of notes, can, you, can, you can make uh, infinite varying uh, music. So I think that one project would be to look at the alpha kit uh, and how it exists in different forms in music. And I've been fascinated in this meeting to uh, realize, and in a very profound way, that rhythm itself can be thought of as, as, as an alpha kit because some, some of you are showing that small numbers of component elements can make complexity just in rhythm itself, not in notes making a melody. So for example, um, Amen was talking about musical notes forming cells. That's not pure rhythm, this is now melody. I'm mixing up mil uh, melody and rhythm here. Forming cells which go into songs in the Arab Andalusian uh, tradition. Um, Zeb was talking about the five or six strokes in the Turkish usul that end up making a chain of 16 plus 20, 24, 30, so, so, so his, his, his chain usul. Uh, there's uh, Anja's looking at musical notes in metrical hierarchies. Uh, Aske's uh, the seven angas times five beats times five divisions in this tala. You see, it's, it's the same idea of a relatively small number of simple elements building up to complexity, and it's existing in different musical traditions. Uh, Maria is telling me about the, the, the tetrachords, it's misspelled, uh, musical notes making tetrachords, making a scale, making a song. Uh, we heard uh, Xavier with the five instruments with limited strokes, making the complexity of the Beijing opera. There's going to be a discussion group on Wednesday on syllable structures. Um, uh, I'm thinking of Gottfried's uh, strokes and rests um, in, in the cycle of 16, where you get the 4,000 possible uh, combinations of just that one. Uh, the, the stuff that uh, Jaime and Carlos and George are doing is slightly different because these, these are now analog uh, variable systems, but there's still, they're still a little bit of a human combinatorial uh, structure here. So I see this as a, uh, it could almost be a, a research topic, and uh, people are going to tell me that the, you know, people have really looked at this, but, but really starting to search for this particular kind of alpha kit structure and how it might be varied um, across different, different um, uh, musical traditions. So that's one thing that's really struck me here. I want to say if just a few words about um, other kinds of patterns that one could investigate. Um, uh, Godfrey, uh, in his book, has, has some look at calendar structures and your, and your, uh, um, your, your, your musical, musical structures. So when I, I think of calendars, you can see that, you, you can, one can see that, that days of the week build up to a week, and then there's a cycle of weeks, and they build up to a month. And by looking at various calendar structures, I did this in my book, Meta Patterns, uh, and then thinking about other aspects of time, I, I came up with three basic meta patterns of time, uh, arrows in which something is either, this is the propagation term in the evolution, but something is uh, continuous or continuously changing. Then there's breaks, there, there's a, a sudden change in the system behavior. And then there's also cycles, there's returns. And so with these three, you can start putting them together and you can get things such as sequence of the stages. So this is symphonies with different music uh, movements or in Kofi's African drumming yesterday, theme with a bridge, theme B with a bridge, theme C. And one can think of these on different <coughs> scales. Uh, the humans tend to look at things in cycles and nature tends to be, biology has all kinds of sequences of stages in it. On the right are the sequences in the Zen enlightenment, the, uh, the 10, the 10 ox herding pictures. So I'd like to uh, su suggest that one could start looking at some of these uh, circular features of music as, um, as arrows and uh, breaks. And Godfrey, what you're doing today is sort of chunking some of these and you're looking at complexity. Uh, one can take um, a cycle, a circle, and this could be, what I'm suggesting here, this is maybe a crazy research program, but one could start taking some of these patterns and looking at them on different scales within the, the repetitive, let's say, 12 or 16 uh, beats that has some pattern in it that now has some chunking. 
the, you know, the calendar sort of does this with the week, the days of the week, and then the weekend, and then it, it cycles through. Uh, and so I did a, I did a little uh, thing on, on, on Gottfried's um, uh, kind of diagram with Sunshine Are You Love by the Cream. You know, it goes like that. And it's, pretty, it's kind of a complex cycle, but you know, I kind of see it as these you know, chunks of four, and you were doing something with repeating, repeating patterns within the cycle itself is, is, is one kind of way of doing the metric. Uh, so, 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 I'm, so this onset in, interval is a, a, a way of um, uh, looking at that. So, so I want, I, I'm going to just end by saying uh, you could have binary systems. You, I, I was doing an analysis during this conference of various kinds of binaries. So, so what is this? Uh, what I'd like to do is, is say music is, is complex enough and you're all looking at particular patterns of rhythm that uh, there are certain meta patterns in there that can be done on different scales. In particular, this, this I think particularly interesting to me is this idea of an alpha kit because it's so important in both bio, the beginning of biological and, uh, and cultural evolution. So I'm going to end just with one, one moment of me playing guitar in my band, the Amygdaloids, um, which is Joe Ledoux's uh, work on the amygdala. <laughs> Okay, thank you. <laughs> Great question. What do you play in the amygdaloids? I play guitar. Oh, okay. I'm the guitar. Yeah, uh, it's off screen already. <laughs> oh, it didn't show up. The, the video didn't show up there? Uh, oh, no. oh, oh, I'm sorry. So, Combo genesis. Yes. So, how does this relate to the idea of an, an emergent property of a system? Yeah, I mean, it sort of it, it's, it evokes the same many of the same kinds of things. Yes. So, so how does it relate to emergence? So, it's definitely related to emergence, uh, and it, I would say it's a subset of what the complexity theorists are calling emergence because it's, I'm using it to be very specific for these major levels of being. Where you could have you could have emergent phenomena on many many different scales. When I started looking at emergence, though, it's just all over the place. It's not well defined. You know, it's the whole is greater than the sum of its parts. It's some people do emergence only the, if it's cellular automata. It's all the parts have to be identical, and you get emergent behavior. But then there's heterogeneous systems. It was just all over the place. So I'm trying. I'm actually avoiding using the word. But there there is a re relationship there. Mm -hmm. Um, so there's this other d idea that's sort of related to emergence, which is this idea of circular causality. So when um, uh, elements combine into a larger structure, then the behavior of the, the larger uh, group then affects the behavior of the components. Yeah. Um, have you thought about that? Or oh, oh uh, yeah, absolutely. Because, for example, when cells um, entered into multicellularity, all those cells got changed because now those cells are subject to evolution. So there's mm -hmm. kind of a downward causation, and yet the body can only be what the cells are capable of of, uh, of being. So one thing that's, that struck me about the uh, thinking of these alpha kit structures in uh, in musical rhythm is that the um, I mean, there's some discussions where some of these basic strokes get changed uh, uh, over time, or or a new system comes in. So one really has to think of these as uh, kind of co-evolving in cultural evolution, not uh, not as a static set of, of elements that that gets that get uh, established forever, and you're only building the complexity off of that. But I'm just I'm just fascinated by the by this by this pattern that's occurring in these different musical traditions, and the fact that it occurs in rhythm. Uh, in its own in its own world, really, this alpha kit structure, and it clearly occurs in melody. So I think music is fascinating in that way, in that often you've got these dual 
rhythm and melodic alpha kit structures that are now interacting with each other on kind of a binary system. Thank you. Your presentation made me think of a book by Steve Wolfram, A New Kind of Science. Mm -hmm. And I know of some composers who actually compose with that sort of fractal principle, if you will. But um, could you comment a little bit on that, on how his approach is different from yours? Well, yeah, so, so he's doing the work with the cellular automata where you start off with a grid and, the, and, the, and they have rules. So I, what I like about it, it, it is reducing, <laughs> it's reducing reality to, to things and relations, these, these things that have relations. Um, he, and so it is, and it's also very mathematical, and he analyzes very mathematical, various mathematical properties of these systems, which, which I'm, I, I, ultimately one, one might want to do that. Uh, however, I don't, I think it's gonna be hard to move from I haven't studied it in great detail, but it seems to be almost like two levels. You get these automata, and now you get these patterns coming out of the automata. But our universe has moved through many fundamental levels, and the nature of the relations has changed so much as you go from, as you go from forces of physics into biology, when, where in biology, cells can only exist because there's inputs and outputs continually flowing across membranes. And that's a very different kind of relations than were had by the, by the atom with, with the physical forces. So what I'm with Wolfram on is that, is that it's things and relations, but, I, but what, I, what I'm into is that by, by not being in a way limited to the cellular automata model, one can start ranging across scales of phenomena and asking questions of things that may be there. Sometimes it's, it, it may be too wild and, and, and the simulators are, are just in your mind. Or, but you may start finding patterns that are similar that you, you, you would have never gotten to where you were limited immediately to your tools of the cellular automata. Well, there's lo loads of food for thought here, uh, but I just want to suggest that, that the, uh, at some point we may be ready to make a comparative evolution of language and music. Mm -hmm. Because since we actually have a lot of data on the evolution of languages in those parts of the world that had writing, the actual grammatical functions of language have not evolved all that much, really, for millennia. Mm. Whereas I think we know enough about certain musics in some parts of Asia, at least, uh, or the Eastern Mediterranean, to say that the musical uh, means of expression have evolved far more in the comparable amount of time that language has. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, I, th I think it's. Yeah, I think uh, it would be great to you know kind of look at look at those connections in a new way. I mean the. One thing about language, the, the, the noun and the verb structure, that's you know, fairly universal. I, I guess with the Navajo language, it's kind of debated what it means. But you know, that, that, there's the things and relations. There's the, there's the pa basic pattern of the, of, of the thing and the, uh, how they move and right. how they change. Yeah, and again, with language, we have in the Mediterranean world and China and India, we have thousands of years yeah. to observe the evolution of language. Yeah. yeah. All right, thank uh, all our speakers for a spirited session and we can continue over lunch. Thank you.